So for those of you who don't know me, my name is George Permain. I work for the government uh, and I spend most of my time looking at financial services regulation. Um, three years ago, uh, I probably had only vaguely heard the name Bitcoin or looked at it uh, in the news maybe, uh, and didn't think that it would be something that I would spend a specific amount of time looking at in our work uh, to create uh, and develop Jersey uh, as a better, more forward-thinking international finance centre. Um, the government, however, recently has put a huge amount of focus on new technologies uh, because they will change uh, and innovate the way that we bank, the way that we transact, and the way that we do business with each other. Uh, and therefore, uh, the government must consider the environment that we're creating in order to ensure that we are best placed to take advantage of those new technologies as, as we move forward. Um, I'm not going to spend tonight giving a huge uh, promotional pitch to Jersey because most of you are already here. Now, we are recording, of course, and there are other people who are going to see this, but uh, I think tonight will be more about telling you what we've done in order to create the environment that we think needs to be created so virtual currency work can flourish. So three years ago when we started looking at it, we worked out that it would pose uh, potentially both an opportunity and a risk to the jurisdiction. Many of you will be familiar with the, the origins of Bitcoin, uh, issues over Silk Road and the dark net, uh, and there are a number of links that Bitcoin links to anti-money laundering and potentially terrorist financing links which need to be dealt with. Uh, we then decided that given that we were aware that activity was occurring in Jersey, that we should carry out a full risk assessment, which was done by the JFSC, our financial regulator, in, uh, in conjunction with ourselves and the government and other agencies. Uh, and that risk assessment uh, came uh, out with the result that where we really needed to uh, place regulation in order to protect the, the island and also to potentially to build confidence in consumers of virtual currency uh, was to regulate at the interface between uh, virtual currency and what we know as fiat currency or when we go and speak to others we refer to as normal money as most people would understand it to be, cash. Um, this was a position that, as we started looking at it, became more adopted by other reputable international bodies. So we saw the European Central Bank putting out papers, we saw the FATF putting out papers, and more, most recently, I suppose, in January of this year, uh, we saw the IMF putting out a paper suggesting regulation at the interface, uh, and also uh, we've recently seen the European Commission publishing it. That'll be their approach. However, we were a fair amount further forward in this regard, and so the rather uh, not particularly obviously named uh, Financial Regulation Miscellaneous Provisions Jersey Law uh, was lodged, <laughs> sorry, Jersey Regulations uh, was lodged uh, in April and was debated earlier this month in the States. That introduced uh, provisions in relation to uh, regulating at the interface between fiat and virtual currency. Now, Robbie, interestingly, uh, uh, put up a definition of virtual currency which the European Central Bank came up with. We also, in a working group, which contained a number of people in the jurisdiction, including guys from, from Gabby, uh, we had people who were working in the area, uh, we had lawyers involved, we disagreed with the, uh, the views that the European Central Bank came there, and we've taken a different definition. Now, my magical piece of technology has died, so I'm not going to go through it word by word, but uh, what we came up with was a definition that we thought really actually encompassed the digital nature of virtual currency, and critically based around digital exchange. So what we've regulated is we've created a category inside our proceeds of crime law uh, of a virtual currency exchanger. That will be someone who will be carrying out virtual currency exchange from fiat to virtual. This is a different approach that's been taken elsewhere. One area that we can look at specifically it was taken very early on by the Isle of Man, who stated that they weren't just going to try and regulate at the interface from fiat to virtual, they were going to regulate across the, across, the, across the field. So they were going to be looking to regulate transactions between virtual and virtual. Now, you can make your own mind up about the, uh, the merits of that decision by them, but virtually every single paper that's come out since they did that by all of the agencies I meant earlier said that the difficulty with taking that route is how can you possibly introduce checks and balances in a world whereby we don't know how those transactions will occur. It's simply not possible to do. So for the protection of Jersey, we believe we've, we've introduced a regime which is uh, effective uh, and should build confidence with people using, using virtual currency. Now, Whilst I've said we recognise the opportunity, many people say to us, oh, well, you, you're spending all this time introducing regulation for virtual currency. There's no one here doing this business. Well, we say, oh, there are, there are a few people starting up. They say, well, you're hardly going to create a business with hundreds of jobs. And we say, well, maybe not now, but in the future, this will be an important area. And what we're doing here is very much um, 
I suppose, putting a step along the path to creating the environment to show that we are a jurisdiction that's very welcoming uh, to virtual currency work. And I, I wouldn't stop uh, at virtual currency. I think virtual currency, we've said, is a significant building block of a modern digital economy. There are many other technologies that go far further than that. Now, we've spoken about some of the uh, interesting innovation that's being done on the blockchain. Uh, the DAO is, is quite an interesting area looking at that, but there are so many other uh, innovative uses of the blockchain, uh, which is, for those of you who don't know, which I assume most people here do, is the technology which effectively Bitcoin is built off. Um, there are many opportunities there, and one thing we've done this year as a jurisdiction is we've joined a, a forum called the Bitcoin and Blockchain Leadership Forum, which myself and John uh, went to uh, earlier this year, and equally we've, we've been engaging in since the end of last year. And at those events, we've seen presentations and the likes of R3. Uh, R3 are a consortium of banks which are encouraging innovation on the blockchain to change the way in which banks conduct effectively payments between each other to potentially solve what's known as the, I suppose, the correspondent banking problem where you have three parties to every transaction. If you think about the potential savings that could be made there, it could be significant. This very much leads into the strategy that we've uh, had published more recently, so the draft digital strategy and the financial services strategy, which encourages using Jersey as a test bed for innovative technology. We see the virtual currency piece of regulation as being a key part of that, and I don't think it will be where we'll stop. We'll, we'll look to take opportunities as we move forward. Um, now, many people have asked me, when's these regulations coming into force? They were adopted by the states, our parliament, in, in, in June. We're bringing them into force in September. Um, they're not a standstill piece of legislation either. Uh, what we came up with the working group was a good starting point, we thought, but there would need to be work with the industry as we brought these in to see how the uh, notification and registration process worked with the JFSC, who will be the regulator for the purposes of regulating the virtual currency exchanger. And if we needed to make changes in order to make sure that they were implemented effectively, we, we said we would. So we're going to uh, uh, set an appointed day act to begin in September, uh, probably uh, uh, sometime uh, towards the end of the month. Uh, and then we will be effectively open for business in a regulated financial, uh, a regulated uh, virtual currency jurisdiction. Now, uh, Jamie at the beginning spoke a little bit about regulation in the UK. Now, many of you will be aware that uh, two years ago and a year ago, there was a lot of noise coming out of the UK that they were going to regulate virtual currency the interface. Um, we've had some contact with the Treasury who's dealing with that, uh, and from, from our position it appears that that has gone very slowly and there's not been any legislative proposals yet going in front of the UK Parliament to deal with that. Um, as of when they'll get round to doing that now is, is anyone's guess. I think there's more important things that they're, uh, they can be busy doing. But we are there. We've taken slightly longer. Um, the reason we've taken slightly longer is because we believe that we've come up with a more holistic workable solution for the jurisdiction and something that should really buy into the Jersey as a quality international finance center brand, but also one that's interested in being a test bed for innovative financial technology. So inside the regulatory piece, we've created um, what I would refer to as an exemption, but we have badged as a sandbox. This is very different from the FCA sandbox, which is something that's a far more holistic approach uh, to allowing companies to develop uh, and test products on actual customers, and Jamie's involved with that right now, so that's really interesting to hear how that's going. We have said uh, that we've effectively got a two-tier approach to starting up virtual currency exchange. Um, if you are likely to turn over uh, less than 150,000 as annual turnover in the year, you'll be required to notify the JFSC that you're carrying out virtual currency exchange business, uh, but you will not be required to register, which means you won't be required to pay a fee and you won't be, sub you won't be subject to full proactive on-site regulation. So the idea is that the JFSC will still have the powers if they're made aware that actually you're not complying with the requirements of the money laundering order, which are the identification requirements that you must apply to your clients when doing exchange business. They can still come in, but they will not be doing proactive, onerous on-site visits. And equally, you won't be subject to the fee uh, while you remain under that 150,000 turnover. Um, that figure that we've put on uh, is linked to how we deal with money service business regulation, although it's lower uh, than our current limit for money service business. Um, the reason it's lower is because, uh, we, we've made no secret of this, we're about to have to lower the level for money services business because we had an international evaluation where they told us it was probably too high. Uh, and secondly, because we, we had to take a, uh, a considered estimate of what that should be. But we've said that if we see through a trend of patterns that um, 
through a trend almost, that uh, the level is too high or too low, we will be willing to alter that in order to ensure that it's an appropriate level. But we think that that should give startups an appropriate boost uh, in order to start virtual currency exchange business. So, okay, brilliant. Thank you very much. And let's uh, <laughs> set the uh, chair back to the panel.